Hello, I'm Jackie Barry, author of the new book, Experiential Speaking, which is icebreakers, energizers and games for speakers, trainers and anyone has to give a presentation. I'm here today with Dr. Jason Gould, who heads up the chiropractic clinic in Chislehurst and is also a speaker to audiences of chiropractors around the world, but also to business people and anybody who wants to improve their well-being and mindset. Uh, Jason was telling me that one of the things he has done is participate in a certain computer game that has developed leadership skills that have leaked into real life. So Jason, hello and welcome. And can you tell me a bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. I, I first um, came across the idea about gamification um, at an event where um, they said how you, how you play games is how you play life. And so um, I had the, my first leadership experience was actually, um, I suppose it was a personal development breaking an arrow with the soft part of my neck. And they said, write your fear on the arrow. And I'm, I'm looking around the group around thinking, well, if you can do it, I can do it. If you can do it, I can do it. And then they said, well, so what's your fear? And I thought about it and thought, well, my fear is going first. So I wrote that fear on the arrow and then I thought, well, I've thought that now. So I asked if everyone minded whether I go first. They're like, of course you can. And I, I did, I, I broke the arrow. And what happened afterwards was then everybody asked me, can you help me hold my arrow? And what I realized at that point, that was my first distinction in leadership was leaders tame their fear first. I had no idea how to, to do it any more than anyone else. I just conquered that fear first and, and, and went first. Um, and so that, that became, I suppose, part of my starting into sort of look at how to use experiential games to, to help people. Fast forward, I'm, I'm sitting with my brother-in-law a year ago and he um, managed to talk my son into playing a game um, on the computer. I, I decided to play it with him. And what I soon realized was um, there were some opportunities to not just play the game itself, but there was what they call a clan, a group of 50 people in, a, in, in this um, computer game that are from all over the world, don't know each other other than a, a nickname in the game. And so I, 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 f I found a group that um, seemed to be um, making progress and thought I'm, I'm going to align myself with the group so in a very short space of time I became one of the leaders within the group um, I created a culture statement um, and what that did was help to uh, um, uh, you, you have um, people from all different backgrounds all different walks of life all volunteers who aren't paid to to come together to actually uh, create progress with something. So in this computer yeah. game, it's a virtual world, is it? Where everybody That's has roles and activities and an environment. It's a, it's a, vir it's a virtual world. Um, the, the, the game's um, World of Tanks Blitz, which is the uh, mobile game. And they have uh, what's called a Discord site, which is uh, an app. Um, and, and, and so that's that's kind of how I got interested in um, using what I've learned in terms of um, leadership skills and how can I kind of cross purpose, but also almost like an experiment in a way to how to get people from we've, we've um, grown to seven clans in one group and become one of the leading clans in, in Europe, maybe even the world. And the way that we've done that is to inspire other leaders within the group to take action. We've got a now a core group of 15, uh, well, seven leaders and, and deputies. So a total of about 15 people who um, not, not only play tournaments and, and games, but it, it's what, what's been really interesting is by creating a culture and um, making it, a family friendly clan and some of the, the, the things about it, it what, what we've seen is that synergy and that group that's, that's come together so um playing a game and playing it in in real life it's it's really interesting how it's used uh, leadership skills marketing skills um working with people helping support them and help develop them so i've i've but it's also a game so 
it, you're not in there other than time there isn't any money investment so it's really interesting to explore and test things that you um sometimes in other areas in life may hold you back you can you can certainly um, get to experience how how that works and it's, it's been quite an incredible journey actually in terms of seeing um other leaders develop within that group and organization and, and see how powerful um creating a culture and, and a vision statement has been for um attracting the right people and also the the people that didn't align have left so it's, it's really interesting so you do this for fun in your downtime after a busy day at work and yes. but in your real life you have members of staff that report to you so you're you're a real life leader as well Can yes absolutely. You think of um some particular parallels is there something perhaps you've tried in that virtual world and maybe succeeded that you then applied in real life or maybe something you've tried in the virtual game and, and failed and therefore decided made a different choice in real life within the last few months there was a challenge within the group um and i think what had happened is um they tr uh, they tried to grow the group too quickly and you've got a lot of a lot of people in the wrong seats and what happened was um, myself and one of the other leaders um, had a had a conversation about we, we, we recognized that and we went back to basics and created um, more more structure more leadership and what's really interesting is as as I was doing that um, although I haven't had that experience specifically within my business at the moment I'm actually looking at um, so I'm I'm I am a chiropractor in the clinic. Um, there we have a clinical team. There's five of us as chiropractors and three massage therapists, um, and we've got a team of about twenty people. And what I've recognised is, as I've got, um, I'm not just busy adjusting patients. I'm about to um, author my second book, um, publish my second book, and, I, and there's a number of other projects we've been working on. And I recognise that the way to do that is to have. A really strong leadership team that are um, taking some of the tasks that I haven't got time to do now and making sure that it's delegated not abdicated and so having had that recent challenge within the tanks game it's it, it gives you more clarity that the work that we're doing and it's um, actually making sure that that structure's in place and you're you're putting a lot of um, time effort and energy to get that structure right and sometimes it feels that that might be slowing down other areas but I think it's so important um, every organization that I've seen that's had challenges when they start to grow and develop it seems to be it, so important to have that good quality leadership team in place and to be able to all be on the same page and developing that so I think um, certainly the insight from that is is only a small part of it but it's it certainly helped me recognize it a lot faster it, i might have spent longer had i had i not had that experience recently because what you're doing is practicing those real life skills in a safe environment uh, absolutely um, you've probably sat in many presentations where the speaker has tried an activity with the audience can you yes. think of some that for you as a participant have worked particularly well or perhaps some that haven't worked for you? A, a, a team building game where you take a tennis ball, you have a group of people all around a circle and you start off as the leader, you throw the ball across the room and then they're throwing the ball backwards and forwards. You get it into a pattern, so it's a bit random. And then you ask the group, can you do this faster? eventually something clicks and the ball starts to go round the circle Every, the rules are everybody's got to touch the ball and the ball can't go on the floor and um, so then the ball starts moving round and round till it gets into a rhythm and then everybody's got into the rhythm and then you say well the last group did this in eight seconds you took a minute and you pause and let them and you, you're letting them sink in the meaning of it and the solution for the game is that everyone eventually comes together holds their hands like this and the ball drops down the middle and the light bulb goes off but sometimes it takes 15 20 minutes for that to click and then you go back to the teaching point of the actually sometimes thinking outside the box or and utilizing it and what happens is everybody that's doing that exercise in a team building environment 
you'll have people sitting out, not really participating. Some people will be trying to, to, to sort of talk. And it's really interesting for how cohesive the team is, is how well that exercise works. So it's a, it's a great way to kind of incorporate that in, into things. That's, from my mind, one of the ones that really stands out the most in terms of um, games that I've, I've seen. For my mind, this is where the experiential learning uh, takes place. It's because you can tell them anything and they may or may not be listening, but when they do it and have that experience themselves, they'll remember it forever and remember the point that you're trying to communicate. Yes, so that's absolutely. a great example. Thank you. For my, for my own experience as a speaker, when I was yeah. very, very first starting speaking, possibly 10, 12 years ago, I what worked really, really well in a small audience didn't work in a large audience and that was me going around showing people how to do a core stability exercise works great in a small group but as soon as the group gets to a certain size you you then notice that you're speaking to one person and you're speaking to someone else so I, I, I learned there that um, it's really important to notice the size of the audience and the type of game that you want to or, or demonstration as it were to, to, to work with. In, in your presentations I'm guessing you use quite a lot of demonstrations, physical activities and I'm, I'm guessing but are these different if you're talking to your peers than if you're talking to the general public? Yes so if I'm speaking to a general public audience one of the, the things that I might do is for example if I want to demonstrate a point so this isn't more a game but more a demonstration um, how nerves tendons can get affected like you can try this now if you put your hands like this and keep them soft and turn them now squeeze them to your fingers tightly together and do the same thing can you feel the pinching yes if not squeeze harder Okay. Um, you can feel that pinching. So that's a very quick, easy way to help people connect dots. So I would use um, examples to help people um, connect the dots in, in that type of audience. If I'm speaking to a group of professional chiropractors, um, it may be um, something that I'm doing that will help them. So a lot of the time, for example, I, I work with a lot of professional athletes. Um, so we, we may do a, um, a session where I'm actually demonstrating techniques of how I might do an adjustment. I might show how I test the power and then get them to actually experience that and then work in, a, in, in their group. So demonstrate first and then they then get them working on their adjusting tables to test things with their the partner they're working with. And then I walk around to make sure that they're, they've understood what I'm teaching. So it's a very um, different, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call that a game, I'd call that technique but based on what we're talking about it, it is it's experiential learning yes it's an it's interactive and participative and because they're trying to learn a physical um, activity the only way to really get that into your bones and muscles is to do it uh, so that makes perfect sense and yes it does stretch away from games as such but it is an activity uh, that's more involving and then more interesting for the recipient to get your point. So a yeah. couple of final things then. Sure. Uh, I know you've written one book and published it already. You've got another one on the way. Uh, yes. So tell me a quick uh, summary of what are, the, what are your books about? So my first book is called Brain Balance. It's a co-authored book and it's about how um, the effects of stress um, predominantly emotional stress affect us, the brain and the nervous system and some of the things people can do to um, unplug from a, a world that's so high paced, high tech and stressful. The second book I'm writing is called Thrive. That's my all my own content and it looks at five key areas of health and well-being. Um, most people I speak to want to live an optimal life and sadly so many people are suffering unnecessarily. So the whole purpose of the book is to help people on their journey to health and um, have some inspiration and insight to things that they can do themselves. And if someone's watching this and they're based in or near Chislehurst, I can highly recommend going for an adjustment with Jason and the team because I've been going for years and every time I walk out two inches taller than I was when I walked in. Oh, thank you, Toby. <laughs> thank you very much for your insights in this quick conversation. A really useful, really interesting. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay.